side of the tabernacle, on the epistle side, we have a depiction of the um, the Ark of Noah, uh, that uh, vessel of salvation that carried uh, all of the remnants of mankind when God chose to destroy the earth by a flood. It was the Ark of Noah, which was the vessel of salvation uh, through that flood and now too in the new covenant uh, the vessel of salvation is the bark of Peter uh, the church uh, in which God dwells with his people uh, and he is the the means and the instrument of our salvation so these two salvific aspects the the, the ark of Noah the ark of the covenant are now fulfilled most perfectly in the tabernacle uh, which is the new uh, dwelling place uh, of God with his people in the new covenant. Now the procession for the beginning of mass has begun as the co-consecrators are processing out towards the new chapel. Cardinal Levada is preparing to join the procession and then Bishop Reskowitz and his assistant ministers will uh, bring up the rear of the procession. The bishop completes his vesting and now he goes to the center where we'll soon have uh, the procession. The uh, vesting prayers that the, that the bishop says while he's putting on the vestments uh, reflect uh, the, the sacrifice which is about to take place. Um, one of those prayers being when he puts on the stole, he says, Lord, uh, restore to me the stole of immortality, which I lost through the prevarication of our first parents, so that unworthy as I am to approach unto thy sacred mysteries, I may yet deign to receive eternal joy. And in that prayer is summarized uh, the reason why we have all of these ceremonies today, the fact that Adam and Eve, our first parents, uh, succumbed to the temptation of the devil. They fell uh, and caused all of mankind to fall into a state of original sin, a state of enmity with God from which we could not escape. Uh, but yet God in his mercy uh, and in his uh, overflowing love for his children, for his creatures, sent his only begotten son to die on the cross to make reparation uh, for that sin. And it is that same sacrifice which Christ made on the cross 2,000 years ago that shall now be made present for us uh, that we may receive the fruits of that sacrifice and be restored to friendship with God and uh, ultimately that we might be with him uh, in heaven a uh, privilege and a joy greater than that which Adam and Eve received in the Garden of Eden, of Eden even in their state of innocence. Uh, our state of blessedness in heaven with God Almighty uh, sh shall surpass even that first happiness. The long procession of bishops and other prelates now leaves the front door of the seminary building proper making its way towards the front of the newly consecrated chapel. Father Berg, the Superior General of the Priestly Fraternity, acts as assistant priest to Bishop Ruskowitz today. You can see Ma Monsignor Timothy Thorburn on Bishop Ruskowitz's right. Monsignor Thorburn is the Vicar uh, General for the Diocese of Lincoln and also chaplain uh, to the nuns at the Carmel of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in Valparaiso, uh, Nebraska. He uh, says the uh, traditional mass uh, for the nuns as their chaplain uh, every day at the Carmel. The choir will be alerted as to the arrival of the procession. And the bishop be prepares to enter the church.
see Abbot Anderson entering. Bishop Finn. Bishop Slattery of Tulsa. Bishop Emeritus Timlin of Scranton. And His Eminence William Cardinal Levada. And on his right is Father Eric Flood, the District Superior of the North American District of the Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter. You hear the words that Father mentioned before, terribilis est iste locus. Terrible is this place because it is the very gate of heaven, the location of the presence of God. And in, in this prayer, uh, this most ancient uh, introit, which goes back to the early centuries of the church, um, a Holy Mother Church uh, teaches her children what should be our demeanor in the presence of Almighty God, uh, that He is uh, our Father who loves us, but a Father to whom we must show the greatest and most solemn reverence uh, and devotion. Uh, we do not treat the things of Almighty God carelessly or in a familiar fashion. We tremble as do the angels in the presence of Almighty God, in the presence of a love which is so awesome and so great that we will spend eternity just trying to understand a little bit of it. Once all of the circuit ministers are in place, the bishop bows and begins uh, by ascending the altar, which he reverences, and then prepares to incense it once again. First he kisses the book of the Gospels, and then will impose incense. first incensation of the altar which occurred during the consecration ceremony was simply the incensing of a piece of stone or piece of marble which would become an altar. This incensation, however, is not uh, for a piece of marble but rather is for an altar which represents Christ himself. It is Christ who is being incensed uh, during this incensation. Uh, upon whom uh, he will sacrifice himself. Both priest and victim are the same. The bishop goes to the throne for the length of the singing of the Kyrie. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy.
gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax in universe. Et in terra pax in universe.